Our lesson today is titled On Leviticus and Jewish Faith Traditions Commanded by God. This comes right out of the Gospel and right out of the first reading. We don't live by the literal word for word of the Old Testament and the Old Covenants are no longer because we have a new covenant with and through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The observant Jews, those that would be considered Orthodox or even Hasidic, they today follow the very strict guidelines of Leviticus as the instructions for how and when and where they live and how, where, and when to prepare the Passover Seder, the observant oblation and libation to and from the Lord. Due to the change to the Gregorian calendar, the actual dates change each year as the Jewish festivals are set forth by the Lord, are noted by moon and markings and dates. For example, Passover, Pesach, is the first Saturday after the full moon of the vernal spring equinox. Spring, excuse me, Easter is then the first Sunday after that. Here are the major holidays that correspond with those commanded by the Lord in today's scripture. Rosh Hashanah, the new year, celebrated 10 days prior to the Day of Atonement, on the first two days of the seventh month. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest of holies in the Jewish calendar, 25 hours of fasting. Its central themes are atonement and repentance. Jews traditionally observe this holy day with a 25 hour period of fasting and intensive prayer, often spending most of the day in synagogue services. Yom Kippur completes the annual period known in Judaism as the High Holy Days, or sometimes the Days of Awe. Sukkot, the Feast of Booths, or the Feast of the Tabernacles. One of three days when Jews are commanded to make a pilgrimage to the Temple in Jerusalem. Sukkot will correspond to the full festival of sheaves. The other two are Pesach, Passover, and Shavuot, Pentecost, the celebration for having received the Torah from God. And then also the sheaves festival in spring or fall, depending on what part of the world you are from. Hanukkah is not a festival required by God. This is created entirely by humans to commemorate the rededication of the Second Temple after the Maccabean revolt of the second century before Christ. Purim, a human created festival to commemorate the deliverance of the Jewish people in the ancient Persian Empire from destruction in the wake of the plot by Haman. This is something that you can read about in the biblical book of Esther. Pesach, Passover. This commemorates the story of the Exodus in which the ancient Israelites were freed from slavery in Egypt. Passover begins on the 15th day of the month of Nisan, which is the first day, first month in the Jewish calendar, which is in the spring in the Northern Hemisphere and is celebrated for eight days, seven nights. It is the most wild, widely observed of Jewish holidays. The festival of sheaves is now a minor holiday as the culture is non-agrarian now. It occurs in accordance with that area's seasons of harvest. So if your area would harvest in the spring, the festival of sheaves would be May or June. If you're a fall harvest, you'd be September, October. 
Many of the festivals you as Christians are most familiar with are not amongst those created or commanded of God. Shabbat commands and requirements for all Jews, regardless of conservative, orthodox or reform. For those who observe or keep kosher, they have a great deal of work to maintain this law. Jewish law forbids the consumption of meat and dairy products together. And there is a waiting period to go from eating meat to eating dairy. And it can be as much as six hours. The use of dishes serving utensils and ovens may make food forbidden that would otherwise be kosher. Utensils that have been used to prepare non-kosher food or dishes that have held meat and are now used for dairy products render the food forbidden under certain conditions. The Torah does not give specific reasons for most of the laws of kosher. However, a number of explanations have been offered, including maintaining ritual purity, teaching impulse control, encouraging obedience to God, improving health, reducing cruelty to animals, and preserving the directness of the Jewish community. The various categories of dietary laws have developed for different reasons, and some may exist for multiple reasons. For example, people are forbidden from consuming the blood of birds and mammals because, according to the Torah, this is where the animal souls are contained. In contrast, the Torah forbids Israelites from eating non-kosher species because they are unclean. To maintain a kosher house is a substantial commitment to one's faith and to God, for it affects what and how you eat when you are away from home as well. In areas where there are not large communities of Jewish people, there will be no restaurants that keep kosher in their methods of cooking, in their cleanliness, and in their food handling practices, and in their meat butchering. The same is true for Muslims finding places with meals prepared in the halal standards. They are nearly identical to the kosher. All canned tuna is kosher and halal. All canned chicken is butchered kosher and halal, with nearly the same identical requirements. If something is cooked and sealed kosher, it carries a seal on the outside of the package that says it is, says it is Perev, okay, or kosher. It has a U or a K with a circle, meaning observed by a rabbi and declared Perev, kosher.